Welcome to day 18 of the 2024 Advent of Code. We can see today that the text for the background has been spelled out AOC 10 years. So yes, this is indeed a 10, celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Advent of Code. So we have a, another grid-based problem today with coordinates ranging from 0 to 70 horizontally and vertically. For the example, we are given a smaller grid with coordinates ranging from 0 to 6. So we're going to need a hard-coded value here. Well, let's call that S for size. And we'll initialize it to 6. And we're given the list of byte, incoming byte positions. These are given as x, y coordinates, where x is the distance from the left edge and y is the distance from the top edge, so column row coordinates. We're currently in the top left at 0, 0, and need to reach the exit in the bottom right. So for us, that's 70, 70, and in the example, it's 6, 6. So note that the size of the grid is actually one greater than the max coordinate because it's inclusive on both sides. We want to simulate the falling bytes to planet where it's safe to run, but for now we're going to simulate the first few bytes. So each byte corrupts that coordinate, and we cannot enter corrupted memory, so we need to route around them. Basically, we're just adding walls into our grid. So for example, after the first 12 bytes, this is what the grid looks like. We can step up, down, left, or right, and the shortest path to the exit is length 22. So for us, we need to simulate the first kilobyte and see what the minimum number of steps needed after that is. So let's look at the example. We can use S to denote the size of the grid and N to determine the number of bytes to pull. So let's make our grid. And let's read our coordinates. And now let's go through the first n coordinates. So it's in column row order because x is the column and y is the row. So for c are in the first n coordinates, we'll set that grid value to 1 to indicate that it's a wall. And now it's just a basic breadth first search. Our Q is stored in the format row, column, and distance from start, so basically number of steps taken. Everything else is fairly standard. Note that unlike usual, we use exclusive or strict inequality here because the coordinates are inclusive, which is also why we've done s plus 1 here. If there's a wall or a corrupted memory block at that grid position, then we'll also skip it. If we found the end, then we can exit. And otherwise, we add it into the scene set and the queue. So that gives us 22 for the test case, as expected. And if we tweak the values for the actual input, that gives us our answer for part one. So fairly standard grid-based breadth-first search problem. Nothing special here. For part two, we want to figure out the first byte that will cut off the path to the exit. This is also pretty straightforward. Uh, initially, I thought that we might have to do something like um, graph connectivity, where we dynamically update the connectivity of segments as we gain bytes. But then I realized you really don't need to do that. You can just binary search. Looking through each byte one by one is going to be a bit too slow, because you would have to repeat the pathfinding every single time. So instead, you can binary search. If you check the first n bytes in a list, and you can pass, then you know that the last byte there is before the byte that cuts off the path. If you see that your first n bytes have cut off the path and there is no path, then you know that the last byte there is equal to or beyond the first byte that prevents the exit from being reachable. Because basically the first some number of bytes 
as we progress through those bytes adding them, the path is open. And then there is one specific point where the path closes and it continues like that. And so we just need to find that point. Everything before is open, everything after is closed. And so that's perfect for binary search. We just set a range, look at the middle. If the middle is open, then we only look at the right half of the range. If the middle is closed, then we only look at the left half of the range. So let's pack this into a function. We can delete n now, and let's make s6 again. So we can make a function called connected, which will tell us for the first n coordinates whether we can still get from the start to the end. So we'll initialize our grid, read in those values, and then instead of printing out um, the number of the distance, we just say return true. And here we can just return false. And we also no longer even need to track the distance that we've traveled. It doesn't really matter whether or not you remove this. And so that gives us a function that lets us determine if we're still connected. So if we make this return the distance instead, we can see that this still gives us our expected answer for part one. So for example, here it tells us, well, it would need to be d plus one here. It gives us 22, or if we use the actual input and set this to 1024, we still have our answer to part one. So switching this out for return true and getting rid of some unnecessary data, we can set up our binary search. So the smallest possible value of the coordinate that cuts off the route is index zero. So the low end is equal to zero. The maximum possible value is the last one. So we'll set high equal to chords, uh, the length of the coordinates minus one. That's the last index. So now we just need to do a binary search. So, so long as low is less than high, meaning our range is still not collapsed to the one point yet, we want to check the midpoint. And if the midpoint is still connected, meaning that the first, I guess it would need to be mi plus one. Well, if that is connected, then that means that everything to the left will also be connected. Everything lower than the midpoint will be connected. So low is now middle plus one. And if not, then that means that the maximum possible value is the midpoint because the first mi plus one are not connected. So high equals the midpoint. Basically with binary search, we have this range of values and we know that at some point it goes from being connected to being disconnected. So we look at a range, look at its midpoint. If it's disconnected, then we know that everything to the right is also disconnected. So we only need to look here to find that switch point. If we look at the new midpoint and it's connected, then that means that that value is too small. So we can only look in the right half. What this means is we cut down the search space by uh, dividing by two each time, which means that it takes logarithmic time. You might be familiar with binary search if you've ever played the number guessing game where somebody thinks of a number and you guess and they tell you higher or lower. You've probably independently figured out as a kid that the optimal strategy is to guess in the middle of the remaining numbers. If somebody's telling you to guess a number from one to 100, you'd guess 50 and then you can go higher or lower. If they say higher, you guess 75, lower you go like 60 or so. It's basically the same principle. You're cutting your search space down as efficiently as possible to avoid searching unnecessarily. And since at the end we should have low equal to high, um, we do need to be careful about uh, one-off errors because the one complication with binary search tends to be that you'll get one-off errors. Like for example, this might be offset by one or you'll run into cases where low is actually going to be one less than high when you have your range collapse. Either way, just run a couple times to be careful. I honestly, I'm pretty bad at getting this right the first time. So this is probably wrong and I'll probably need to adjust it. But let's see, the output format for this problem is the coordinates of the first byte. So we need to print chords of low. That gives us six one. Okay, so it seems like I've gotten this correct the first time. Then we just need to print them out separated by a comma. 
we adjust s equal to 70 and run this on the real input, we get 2430, which gives us our answer for part two. Okay, so um, that kind of gets in the way of my point that I'm not good at getting this right the first time, but trust me, that was entirely just luck. Um, you do need to be careful to make sure you don't have one-off errors with binary searching. That tends to be something that I run into a lot as a pain point of this. But in any case, today's problem was relatively straightforward. Basically, we just have a grid, do a very standard breadth first search to see if we can get from the start to the end, and then a very standard binary search. Unfortunately, that also means today's problem was quite susceptible to AI cheaters, although I didn't see as many of them on the leaderboard as in the first few days, so at least there's some progress. But in any case, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.